Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be going over how to use our online dosing calculator for red light therapy. So I'll put a link in the description, or you can usually find it Google searching, you know, Gemba Red uh, dosing calculator, red light therapy, and that should come up. Or if you're on our homepage, you go to the Learning Center, that's where all our comprehensive blogs are, and you scroll down to the section how to use red light therapy, simple dosing calculator. So this is the page. So now you scroll down, you know, universal dosing calculator for red light therapy. Uh, we go over a lot of the math and some of the terminology, uh, and then you get to the dosing calculator itself. So as far as I know, we've been one of the first uh, online dosing calculators for red light therapy. We first published it back in January 20th of 2020. Uh, but I did recently do a couple updates. I've added some a couple features that I want to go over, uh, get your feedback on it, and see uh, you know if it makes sense and it's not too uh, cluttered or confusing. But in concept, it's very simple. You input the irradiance. Uh, sometimes it's called the intensity or the power density, and the units are in milliwatts per centimeter squared. Then you input what dosage you want. Uh, and that those units are in joules per centimeter squared. So usually you should know the irradiance from your device manufacturer. Every device will have, you know, higher, lower, different power levels, different intensity levers, levels due to how much power they have, how big they are, their optics, and all these factors. So that's why every device is a little different. Um, so the manufacturer should hopefully be able to provide accurate intensity numbers. And then your dosage should be coming from, you know, maybe some sort of relevant uh, clinical trial for whatever condition you're treating or, you know, uh, some sort of rev review article that gave some good ranges for, for red light therapy dosing like we covered in our last video. Um, so you should be able to find the right dosage. And so basically all the calculator does is solve for uh, your exposure time. How much exposure time do you need to have at a certain intensity to reach the certain dose. So that's it, pretty pretty straightforward. So a quick example, if we go to our Gemba Red Vector page, you know, this is our mini panel. We scroll down, uh, we find the irradiance numbers, and it's nice to have the irradiance at a couple different distances in case you want different irradiances for different effects. Um, so it's not just about, you know, high intensity just to shorten your treatment time. It's about getting the right intensity. Um, so you use your distance to, to choose different intensities, or you use it with skin contact. So say we want to use it with skin contact, simple, easy, you just put the device right on the skin, you're going to get 44 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Then we go over the, to the dosing calculator, and that's what we put in, 44. And we press enter, or if you just click off of it, it'll automatically update the minutes. So, you know, as soon as you change a number, um, and then click something or press enter, then it'll update the calculation and it'll tell you how many minutes. So if we want, you know, six joules per centimeter squared with the Gemba Red Vector on the skin, then you need to use it for 2.3 minutes. So that's it, pretty straightforward. You know, maybe, you know, that's a good dose, a little bit more superficial. Uh, it's a pretty good starting dose, I'd say, for um, deeper tissue, just to see how you respond. Um, but maybe you want a little bit more dose. So maybe let's put in 15 joules per centimeter squared, and then it automatically recalculates. You need 5.7 minutes to reach you know, 15 joules per centimeter squared. And so that's just the intention of the calculator. You can play around with the numbers, get familiar with it, see how different numbers uh, interact. Um, but it should be very straightforward. It's not about being very prescriptive or give a backdoor protocol. This is just one parameter in your overall dosing scheme of uh, how often you do it, you know, how big is your device, your exposure time, you know, getting proper exposure time, getting proper intensity, um, all those factors, you know, can interrelate. And so some of these new uh, checkboxes I added are for non-contact compensation to compensate for the skin reflection losses. Uh, which I estimate is about 60% for Caucasian skin. If you have a darker skin type, uh, you do absorb more of the light, but it's being absorbed superficially by the melanin. Um, so it's kind of the same problem in, in different ways because melanin we don't know is a, a, an active chromophore for photobiomodulation at this point. And so the melanin superficially absorbing it. So it's kind of the same problem. Uh, lighter skin types will just reflect more. Darker skin types do absorb more, but it's not by an active chromophore as far as we know at this point. And an important consideration is that near infrared, the, the longer the wavelengths, um, they tend to be more similar 
for all skin types. So it doesn't matter what your skin type is for near infrared. It's, it's going to be, you know, f maybe a little bit more absorption, but maybe 50 or 60%. Um, so you kind of use the same factor for, for everyone. Um, but it's just a red wavelengths where darker skin types will absorb more, maybe, you know, 20% more, maybe full more. Um, so, but again, I would still use the reflection losses, no matter your, your skin type. And again, you know, nothing super perfect at this point, you'd have to really get really personalized reflective data to, to understand understand uh, what your skin type uh, responds to. And then the second checkbox is solar power meter compensation. So unfortunately, a lot of brands are still false advertising their intensity numbers. They're using these uh, solar power meters, or you know, which they've been using for over seven years now, even though they know better. Um, but these have a silicone photodiode and it's, you know, calibrated to measure sunlight, which is full spectrum. So when you measure isolated ran and near infrared, you're on the higher end of the sensitivity curve for the sensor. And so that gives you falsely high measurements for intensity. So usually two X or more, um, and it gets worse, the higher the intensity is. So it's not even linear. It's bad for comparison because it's not linear. Um, so it's, it's, you know, been devastating to the industry and, you know, companies are still doing it to this day. Um, so if you expect there's some funny business, uh, that a brand's not providing you with accurate intensity numbers, then you can use a checkbox. At least it'll cut your intensity in half and that'll double your exposure time. Similar to the, uh, skin reflection losses, we're accounting for 60% losses. So you have to 2.5 X your exposure time to compensate for those reflection losses. And then I did add this drop down menu with uh, different dosages, you know, just to give you the range of superficial tends to be four to 10 uh, joules per centimeter squared. And then from 10 up to about 50 is deep penetration. Um, and then a beyond 50, I'd say is pretty excessive. Uh, but again, these are very general ranges and might be, you know, very specific to different contacts, different types of devices. Lasers will tend to use, you know, higher dosages and intensities. Um, so, you know, this is kind of just some rough ranges. So again, people get familiar with these numbers and, you know, you can use the drop down. So when you click the drop down, it erases the field for the uh, manual entry for the joules per centimeter squared. So there's no confusion. So then you can use the drop down to select different numbers and see how many minutes it takes. Um, and then you still manually change your irradiance. Then if you want to go back to having a specific uh, dosage that you just want to type in, you go to the top it says non manual entry. And then it brings back the, the uh, field here for you to input your dose manually. And so that's it. That's uh, the dosing calculator. It should be very straightforward. If you use an honest company, an actually honest company, not a company that pretends to be honest and isn't, and uses skin contact because it's apples to apples. Most studies are skin contact. So if you have a skin contact device, you don't need all these extra check boxes. Uh, it should be very simple and straightforward. Play around with the numbers and play, you know, get, get familiar with the numbers. Um, but again, you know, we got to be a little bit more diligent and hold the influencers that endorse these brands and the brands themselves up to higher standards that they shouldn't be endorsing brands that false advertise their medical devices, I think is a violation, a human rights violation. It doesn't matter what country you're in, um, that people are being coerced into uh, intensities that are being false advertised intensities that are higher than it have been clinically studied in humans. Um, so people are becoming little, little test subjects and, you know, influencers are going to research conferences and trying to ask them if it's okay to overdose, uh, which they've just completely abandoned trying to give people proper dosing, effective dosing, minimum effective dosing. Uh, no, it's okay to overdose. Just get the highest intensity product, blast yourself and pray for a good response. All the, all the top researchers says, yeah, yeah, you won't get permanent damage from, from overdosing. Um, but by definition, overdosing is too much dose. So, um, you know, we've had this calculator up for years. Hopefully it's helped a lot of people. Let me know if you have any questions, um, you know, give people real numbers to, to work with and play with and get more familiar with, with how these numbers work. So thanks for tuning in.